This is a new world record. <laughs> These snowflakes, they're like the biggest snowflakes ever. Look at this. Time to get out in the cold. <laughs> You know, you can only drink hot coffee for so long, right? Oh man, it's going in, getting my running stuff in here. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm, t I love running in snow like this. I know it's a little uh, cumbersome when it comes to getting dressed and like snowflakes hitting your eyeballs, but man, look at this. Look at this seeking beauty. Here we go, three miles easy, three miles easy. Just uh, trying to save the legs for some more uphill <laughs> tomorrow. Woo, holy smokes. Okay, where are the glasses? Wet, nice and wet, all right. Uh, back to work for three or four hours and then onto the gym. Oh my goodness, what a day. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just striving, striving to do better at packing dry clothes. Like sometimes in the morning before work, I either forget or get a little lazy and I don't pack dry clothes. Well, today I successfully remembered to pack dry socks and dry shoes to go into the gym to work out this afternoon. And uh, you know, you just like life gets busy and sometimes you forget to pack dry clothes. So that was a success and shout out to uh, let's see, where is it? Jacob on uh, Instagram. Jacob sent me a message basically asking about strength training and how often he should consider doing it. And I would recommend starting with just once a week for maybe three to four weeks and then bumping that up to twice a week. Uh, I like to do usually Tuesday, Fridays, like today's a Friday. And then, so two days a week of strength training and then once a week of basically maintenance where you're really, really focusing on aqua jogging in the pool, foam rolling on the mats, uh, working on your balance, uh, just overall general maintenance to get those niggles out for everybody outside the US, uh, as you like to call them, those little aches and pains that pop up. And yes, shout out just to everybody who, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that is my Strava and I took a little picture. I was craving fish and chips after my run today. Yes, yes I was. Oh. oh, okay, okay. I'm doing my best to create a slightly shorter video today. I'm not sure if it's actually working, but I'm doing my best. Basically, I'm leaving for a mountain adventure early in the morning, and so I need to go to bed earlier, which means I need to have a slightly shorter vlog. We will see, we will see. Okay, before we dive into perhaps the lightest running shoe I have ever owned in my entire life, and I've been running for 20 plus years now. We will see. We're gonna we're gonna weigh some shoes in here to figure that out. But before we before we do that, I have to give a couple shout outs real quick to Toby, to Dan, and to Andy for basically for commenting on yesterday's Strava post about the new balance beacons. Now, I made a mistake today. Don't do this. Do not lift. Don't go to the gym and lift in your running shoes because as you're putting extra weight on your 
your body, whether you're squatting or just carrying dumbbells around, that is squishing down the midsole foam, okay? So don't do that. That was a slight mistake today uh, on my part, but I do feel like New Balance uh, should write me a check and give me a little uh, give me a little commission for how many New Balance beacons uh, pairs of shoes that I have probably sold through this vlog because guess what? It's a great shoe. It's an amazing shoe. However, perhaps one of the biggest uh, defaults that, or not defaults, one of the biggest issues that people are commenting about, and I believe it was Dan who mentioned this on Strava, the insole is slipping around inside the shoe. So a fix for this is to basically glue it down to the bottom of the, uh, I guess it would be the top of the midsole inside of the shoe. So don't be, don't hesitate to do that. I have not done it because uh, I haven't, I have not experienced too much slipping around but I've read online and seen some other videos actually of people gluing down this insole so anyway that's a little tip before we dive into the shoe all right are you ready for this are you ready for the mystery shoe that is coming all right where where is it dun 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 now as many of you know I am racing my first marathon in 2019 and so I'm looking for the best option for a racing flat on pavement and because I've been a trail runner for a while now and I'm coming back to the roads and I'm a little it's a little foreign to me the racing flat running shoe market so so far we've got in no particular order we've got the Saucony fast twitch uh, 8 thank you again for whoever sent me this shoe you know who you are uh, the Saucony fast twitch 8 which I was not it's not really uh, in the game plan for my marathon but you never know quite a few of you commented and said that you ran your best time your PR in this shoe for the marathon so that tells me I need to keep this guy in the running all right so that's one option I'll put that guy up there and then yes we've got the Nike Vaporfly 4% and uh, supposedly the 5% is rumored out there. We will see. But anyway, here's the 4% from Nike. You guys know all about that shoe. And then just kind of a random shoe that showed up yesterday, or sorry, last week at my house, the On Cloud Flash. Out of these three shoes, this is probably, probably the least likely shoe that I would race in for the marathon. But again, you never know. Uh, I haven't even put it on my foot yet. I will do that very soon. It, it's an ama it, looks it looks amazing. Uh, and it feels pretty lightweight, but I need to give it a test. And again, I'm just keeping my options open. I am beholden to no one, as I like to say. I'm not sponsored by any running shoe company. And yes, frankly, that is a benefit for all of you because like, I can review Ultra, I can review Hoka, I can review uh, New Balance, Nike, On, like the list zero, even though I'll never run in zero, but zero. So anyway, the list goes on and on and I'm just excited now to give you a preview of perhaps the lightest running shoe I've ever owned. All right, are you ready for this? All right, I, I, I'm opening it up right in front of you for the... Uh-oh, uh-oh, the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro is now in my possession. You guys, a lot of you were asking me over the last six weeks to get this shoe. I got a pair. This is a whole... My goodness, and there's even paper in here, wow. Oh my goodness. This is the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro, and if you may have noticed, Reebok kind of left the running shoe marketplace for the last like 10 to 15 years. They kind of disappeared a little bit. Well, I think with the attempt to break two hours in the marathon in this shoe, in the Float Ride, or in the, uh, the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Um, I think Reebok realized, like, wait a minute, I think we need to get in the game here. So, are you ready for how much they're advertising this shoe at? As far as the weight, three and a half ounces. Three and a half ounces. It's got a three millimeter drop from heel to toe. Three millimeter drop, so it's a pretty pretty flat shoe, which means it'll put you up on your toes a little bit. It'll sorry, it'll force you to put put yourself up on your toes at higher speeds in a race. And through the midsole, it's got this P-Bax foam, and uh, 
<laughs> I cannot believe how light this thing is. The Pbax foam, when it's blown into, into the foam, it's lighter weight and a little springier and less liable to condense over time than traditional EVA foams. So we will see over time as I test the shoe out. And trust me, I will not be running in this shoe very much before a race environment. So did you know that the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit has a 39 millimeter stack height? And that's why quite a few people are not buying this shoe because they're nervous that they might roll their ankle, which is a legitimate concern because you're stacked up so high above, you know, the pavement when you're racing. Whereas this guy is a 20 millimeter stack height in the heel. So it's definitely a lot lower to the ground, uh, might create a little more ground contact. And I should, uh, that ground contact feel. And I should mention that uh, this is not my first impression of the shoe. This is obviously not my full review. This is just me pulling the, pulling the shoe out of the box and seeing how lightweight it is. I am excited. And so today I am not going to dive into all of the specs behind the upper mesh and the outsole and diving uh, deeper into the midsole material. Uh, I'm just trying to communicate to you that I'm exploring these shoe options for the marathon race to hopefully, hopefully bring you guys a little bit of value as far as what could be an option for you for your marathon racing shoe, because I know for a fact there's quite a few of you training for either your first marathon in 2019 or maybe your fifth marathon. Like it's awesome to read in the comments down below when you're sharing about, okay, I'm I'm training for a marathon like the London Marathon or Boston or um, uh, Cleveland. There's people going to Cleveland. So it's just exciting to be able to test and yes, you better believe I'm going to be doing cross comparisons between these shoes. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this shoe is way, 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 way lighter. I think it's half the weight of the Vaporfly 4%. And on that note, shall we weigh them? Shall we weigh them? All right, let's do this. And just for kicks, I decided to weigh the heaviest shoe I think that I've ever owned. I'm pretty confident I can say this is the heaviest running shoe that I've ever owned. The Solomon Speed Cross 5. I just weighed it again. It's like just over 11 ounces, about 11.3, 11.4 ounces. This is the Big Bad Wolf. And this is the mountain shoe. This is the climber. This is, I ran in this yesterday for the uphill running uh, vlog. And it's just, I love this shoe. And then I just weighed this shoe, a track spike, so supposedly very, very lightweight. Granted, the technology in this shoe is at least 10 years old. It's actually closer to probably 11 or 12. So we're talking 2007, 2008 that I probably got these shoes. And four ounces, four ounces. And I just weighed this guy for my size, my size, three ounces three ounces oh my goodness stop okay i got it i saved it i saved three ounces three ounces how many steps do you take in a marathon you take a lot of steps thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands i actually don't know maybe you have already calculated that if you like math therefore how do you save your legs for later in the race well one option is to wear lightweight running shoes Ladies and gentlemen, three ounces. I am, um, I'm not about to cry, but I, I, it's like, it's tears of joy as I'm like, did I just discover something brilliant here? I don't know. I don't know. So stay tuned for my first impressions. I got to wait till the, all the snow melts. You better believe I will definitely never, ever be taking these shoes out in any wet weather or snow unless it's a race. And the key word of the day is actually a number. You better believe it. The number three down in the comments, thank you so much for hitting it up for the three millimeter drop in this Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro and the fact that this shoe weighs three ounces. Three ounces. Mmm, 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 man, God, gets me going. And that question of the day, what are the lightest 
running shoes that you have ever worn? And listen, I know that's a very specific and kind of niche uh, question, but I'll be curious to hear about your track spikes, your cross country spikes, your road racing spikes. And if you want to approach this even from a trail running shoe that is lightweight, like that's a really good topic. Like I would, you never want to race in the Solomon Speed Cross 5. You'll be, it's like carrying weights on your ankles. All right. So however you want to approach the lightest weight running shoe that you have ever worn, whether it's a shoe from the 90s, a shoe from the last last five years, or maybe it's this guy. I don't know. All right. Oh my goodness. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Come back tomorrow for some adventures up in the mountains. Oh man. I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Mm. See you tomorrow.